I want you to get together. That's what he said. No, no, He's no. He's the word, no. right? Like, you think, he, you think he was confusing him, trying to confuse people? He was talking about a group of people 2,000 years later. That's who he was talking about. It's, it's <laughs> like, obvi obviously, he wasn't talking about He was about obviously them. talking to me because <laughs> yeah. I'm the most important person in the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, he was talking about a time when uh, transhumanism was coming around. That's what he was talking about. He was talking about uh, future people who cyborg themselves. <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> a lot of, this is what I mean, a lot of um, convoluted mental gymnastic explanations have been given for the past, like, I don't know, century <laughs> like, to explain mm -hmm. away a lot of these things, you know, when people started reading the book for themselves and, and trying to figure out what's going on. A lot of sh like, how many de denominations exist in Christianity? Like, too many to count, really, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah, it's, and that's not that's a sign. There's a problem. There's a big problem because there's only one gospel. There's only one message. <laughs> like, how do we have yeah. so many variations? Like, if you were in the little season. You could imagine something like that happening, couldn't you? <laughs> like you could yeah, imagine. Why, why is it so confusing? Because <laughs> yeah. you do wonder, like, how where do these people get these doctrines from? These these traditions from? Mm -hmm. And I think that you know it has allowed me to think that well, maybe they maybe they're getting it from someplace that's not just made up. It doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean all these people who believe whatever the the weird thing they believe is true. Like I said, but I'm looking like a lot of people. I'm reading my Bible. Like, where is that in here? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that like, the gospel does not change, so I don't believe in this stuff. But, but when you do hear like these certain <laughs> different sects or religions or offshoots of Christianity that believe in their that Jesus already did come back, and they believe in kind of these weird things about like, you know, like the Mormons even talk about that a lot of the biblical locations were actually in in America and stuff like that. It, it was once a time where it would have been easy to clown on that. Now you're like, what? I don't, I'm not saying I believe it, but I'm saying, wait a minute, can you explain to me why? Mm -hmm. Did they believe that? Because then you might actually learn something. Because I think that's the, again, if we can, like I said, if you can go over to like the East, you know, the Far East and see the, the Rakshasa stuff that relates to the Nephilim, so if I can glean, if you can glean truths from that, well, surely we can glean truths from these other denominations and the weird things they think i was actually thinking about the, the whole the catholic idea of like praying to the saints i was like wait a minute do you think that maybe that came from an idea of like there was a time when the saints actually gave things to people mm -hmm. i was like oh that actually makes sense that that that's why they're deified in the way they're shown in some of these cathedrals is it possible that just like after the flood there was people who were hoping for the watchers to come back to give men things if they were kind of like they you know i'm not saying you should ever pray to the saints but it, you kind of understand why they might do it now mm -hmm. because oh, yeah. why wouldn't you always just pray to to the father as jesus said unless somebody said hey it was the saints that gave us all of this stuff and i was like okay mm -hmm. man that actually makes things start to make more sense on why people do the things they do it's also a situation maybe saints literally did intercede on behalf of the places they watched over between mm -hmm. the, those places and christ you know because christ was reigning from new jerusalem with his no saints, i believe you know, i believe so you know. that's what i think but i think vitaly he might have shown a one of these old pictures where it was like jesus was giving like the keys to these people and i think like, the saints were with them and stuff like that i mean i don't yeah. i mean we have to look into that kind of stuff with hey this might not just be just just total fantasy maybe mm -hmm. this means this yeah but i this... think that's the thing is like we have to give people more credit than than we have probably in the past mm -hmm. where, you know because it's, it's, it's very easy just to dismiss things that are like that's stupid that doesn't make any sense instead of actually under, trying to understand why people like why people do the things they do i think that's the thing we've we've tried to do a lot probably in all our all aspects of things but like going back into the past like so why so why was all this stuff happening so messy with the Catholic Church and all these other denominations and stuff like that? I mean, mm -hmm. is it just standard corruption or do some of these traditions actually come from a place of truth? Mm -hmm. Not saying they're true, but do they come from something that makes sense? Yeah. And, and this, I think this... with, that, with that mindset, you can pro we can probably learn more. Yeah. And this isn't us saying the Catholic Church is the one true church today. And what no, we have today no, is, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm definitely not saying I think that. people get no, confused. No. I think um, I was talking to the hijacker who runs uh, Radio Revolution. He's a, a radio host. And he was telling me his 
geopolitical way of explaining all of this from a geopolitical standpoint like how, what were the politics have been like during the time where christ left you know and where the little season mm-hmm. began and he says there would have been an enormous power vacuum left behind and there would have been an immediate feudal war between all the kings and rulers of the time for who's gonna who's gonna win then who's gonna who's gonna run the place now jesus isn't here you know and he says mm-hmm. from a geopolitical standpoint you know that would have been an insane time to be alive. It would have been nation against nation. It would have been king against king. It would have been country against country to try and for dominance. And we've had, the, no, the we've new, had nothing the but new war. Or, the, new, the new order of the age. Yeah, you know, and we've had nothing but wars all throughout Europe and the world for the past like 500 years. Nothing but enormous wars. We've had two world wars, as they call them since then as well, which was empire against empire. And it's a consolidation of power since then. That's all it's been. And it's, it, it kind of makes sense why there was this, just, according to our history, a big period of silence, we'll call, you mm-hmm. know, in the Middle Ages, we call them, the, the medieval period, the Dark Ages, and then, bam, war. <laughs> it's just just suddenly out of nowhere. And that's what would happen. Oh, yeah, just that, like, you know. like the, 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 yeah, the 19th, especially like in the 19th century, and you're just like, what was happening then? Like, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. <laughs> yeah. like, What's that like, mean? That's what that time was like. It, like, it's so... It, it seems so chaotic except for all the people who are <laughs> wearing their top hats and their, yeah. and their nice dresses with their bonnets. And you know, like, but they were, yeah, they were very impressive looking people, but they were pretty, um, yeah, they, they got crazy a little bit. They were, during time. Yeah. They were callous. They didn't care about the people at, at all. You know, they were, and they, they all came across as charitable organizations who were trying to help the people save the orphans, feed the sick, you know, educate the orphans, <laughs> these type of people, you know, and, it was, it was, yeah, it was, you can look, this is, this is another thing about this theory. It's like history tells us one thing, but our senses are telling us something else. Everything we see tells us buried buildings, ornate, intricate buildings. Okay. Created during the 10th century, supposedly. Okay. Mm-hmm. But then we look at our history books. People who lived in the 10th century, lived to the age of like 30 um, did not have right. any they technology all, or power tools, <laughs> you know? and it's kind of they were they were stupid, illiterate. The majority of them were all running feudal baron systems where they were at war with each other all the time. Um, and these people had the knowledge, technology, and know how to build this enormous, monstrous cathedral right behind me. And they, it's kind of like, no, my eyes tell me one thing, the history books telling me something else. This does not square this is not right this is right. way we're, off base we're, you know we're fed if we're fed a narrative <laughs> of these people who were who are really just working on the bare necessities to live mm-hmm. and that's the that's the kind of funny thing when you think about like like these grand cities that were created i think the one thing you would you'd have to believe based on the things we know these would have to be a very prosperous time of peace in order to indulge in all the things that they were indulging in to yeah, to make things so nice mm-hmm. and not just practical. Because I've obviously you could say like, if that's what we do right now, is obviously it's just practical things. We just put things up because hey, it's got to be a building. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Mm-hmm. But there was a time where they actually could take the time to make things beautiful. And if you believe they did it all by hand, well, then they definitely took their time to to make things that are beautiful. Which oh, yeah. again, for people who are just trying to feed themselves. And not freeze to death in the winter time. That's weird. I mean, you yeah. have to admit that's weird. Even it was funny. I was, I went on a live stream yesterday, and I was talking about that the the World Fair stuff. I'm not saying people didn't build these things. I'm not even saying the people who at the World Fairs didn't build it. What I'm saying is, it doesn't make a lot of like what I'm told about it doesn't make any sense as somebody who's in the construction industry, where people say like. I was I was looking through some old world like Instagram accounts and I was seeing the comments and it was making me cringe. I was just I was kind of getting just I was getting tired of all this. Somebody say, "Well, that's only made of wood and plaster," and I'm like, "Well, do you think that that makes it easy?" That's why I said, "What do you think things are made of now?" You can go look at all these apartment complexes that are built out of wood. Like like really tall buildings are made of wood still. So the fact that they are made of wood and plaster does not make them temporary as you think that they are, because the only reason they were temporary is because they were torn down afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like I said, your house is made of wood, probably. Is it temporary? Well, if they tore it down tomorrow, it would be. The real the question is, why did they tear these things down if they look so beautiful? Because they're not 
they weren't made to like blow over with the breeze. They're not like facades where it's like literally you walk around and there's nothing on the other side of them. They were full buildings. And then some of the buildings, they still they didn't tear down and they were actually used later. They're still in use today. And they're not made of just garbage materials. They're made of good stuff. Mm-hmm. So like if something doesn't make sense, it probably doesn't. But we're told, hey, you know, it's like a, you know, a Wizard of Oz situation. Don't look behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to that guy. Mm-hmm. Just go back to sleep. Don't worry about what you've been taught. But I do think that people until now, and probably even myself, well, that some of that stuff is weird. But why is it important? And I said, I keep going back to the fact that if they lied about that, if they lied about any of that stuff with the mud flood or the buildings, it's to cover up something that's absolutely enormous because that's not a small lie. If they lied about that stuff, if you, if they lied about why there was fires in every major city in America for like, for like a hundred years in a row, like every, like go, just pick a town, pick a, pick a big city you've heard of in America and, and type in great fire. Mm-hmm. And there was one that's weird. I mean, I think that that's, that's strange, especially because it's like the, these places which is like tinder boxes, like, mm-hmm. like massive amounts of these places burnt down. So then you kind of think if they had all these other buildings, well, what did it look like before the, these places burnt down? Mm-hmm. You could only imagine. You could, re- you could really only imagine. And that's the funny part is that supposedly these places in the World Fairs, are di- they're just, you know, quickly thrown together. But there's buildings that still stand that actually are similar to those Mm -hmm. that they did build out of stone and all the, the real stuff to last forever. Mm -hmm. So isn't that the kind of funny part where it's like, if you built up Chicago to look like a place, well, that looks like Paris does in a lot of places, in a lot of parts of Paris. So it's not hard to believe that, that people did that at one point, because we can go right to Paris and say, look, this, there's a building just like that. It's places in Germany. There's, Mm -hmm. there's buildings just like those ones from like the St. Louis World Fair in San Francisco. So it's not hard to believe that those buildings existed in America because they exist other places. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the issue is those buildings existing in America does not fit the narrative they've told you. Absolutely. That's the issue. So yeah, in America, sure. the old world fairs happened and then were deconstructed or great fires happened, which destroyed a lot of the architecture that was there originally. And now you've got the more utilitarian basic stuff on top of it. Um, or, you know, stuff that sh- stuff that shouldn't have existed <laughs> because we're not supposed mm-hmm. to, we've, we've only just discovered the new world, you know, like not that long ago. Mm-hmm. So we can't, these things can't be here. So it seems like a lot of them just got wiped out or destroyed or raised to the ground by fires or false events, for example. But in Europe, these buildings still exist. They weren't all destroyed in great fires and they weren't all like disappeared. We still have them because we have an older history and it fits the narrative. Well, you know, Europe right. has a rich th- thousands of years of history. You know, we yeah. know exactly mm-hmm. why these things are here. You know, we know exactly. So we, we don't have to destroy them, but they did use the wars, World War One and World War Two, to decimate and level a lot of stuff. A lot of things destroyed. Now, Dres- yeah, Dresden, you, you for, can only imagine. Dresden, for example, was considered the most beautiful city in Europe. Like, there was nothing compared. And that's one of the ones that got bombed the most, right? <laughs> Britain carpet bombed the place and literally wiped out about 95% of everything that was there. But even what remains is beautiful. Even today, it still like boggles the mind just what is still around. You can't even comprehend. We could not even imagine what was there. Now we think about you kinda it. Want, you kind of wonder in America, well, not America, but in Japan, that after, the, after we basically had the, the Japanese defeated, they went and dropped two atomic bombs on them. Mm-hmm. Like Who knows? They they had to drop two. They didn't just drop one. They dropped two, and they, that's before they firebombed Tokyo. Mm-hmm. So like, what what did those places look like there? Because I've seen like the there's some images of what is it? there's a gate in Japan that looks almost exactly like the same one in in Germany. You're like that's weird. Yeah, like that should not be. That should not exist. But, no, but it but it does. So yeah, so so I do kind of wonder like what is that? Like it's it's kind of unexplainable, and I. And the funny thing is, like, the one explanation I've got a lot is, like, well, those buildings cost too much today. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking about it. Again, the 1800s in America were, were, were crazy. We had a civil war. 
where like a lot of people died and a lot of places got burnt down again in the, the war where things got burnt down and then you see the world fairs pop up like 30 years later in these places that they were part of the civil war like does that seems weird to me like that that when a country cannibalizes itself like that that they would have the the resources to throw these grand fairs when mm-hmm. when today like the idea that the, whatever place you live in could do what they're doing what they did then like why not i think that's the whole idea if, like if we're more advanced than them we should be able to do the things they did easier mm-hmm. or cheaper but we can't so like there's an explanation of why they could do things that were like very tangibly better than we can do mm-hmm. and they had more money you're like but isn't more money kind of in existence? I mean, I know I'm not just talking about just printing it, but I'm saying that the fact that the economy's grown because there's more people, the rich people still have a lot of money. Why couldn't they still do some of these things? Because it was, it's not the poor people that are building those buildings. It's the rich people that for some reason they lost a taste for doing that. Mm-hmm. But why? Well, but, uh, they, they can't do it. That's the issue. They have, we don't, this is the thing, because uh, someone sent me a link. I uh, well, said, Check out Antwerp in Belgium, just this place in Belgium, a city, you know. Uh, I think Brussels is the capital of Belgium, but Antwerp is just the north of that slightly. And it's incredible. Like, Antwerp looks insane with old world architecture. And I was just exploring, and I, I saw the train station there. And there's one of those pictures someone somebody's taken aside where they did a panorama with the phone, so you can do a full 360 look around mm. the whole inside of the train station. And I'm looking around the insides of this train station in Antwerp, and I'm, and you can see at the bottom when you look down, they've installed like modern electric doors that open and lead you into the the place where the trains go. And I'm looking at that, and I'm like, this place was not built to be a train station. You mm-hmm. did because it looks like a cathedral. Everything about right. it is is when when this was built, they did not imagine this is going to be a train station. <laughs> that's not yeah. what they were thinking at all this is going to be a hub for transportation it's like this was a place where people cared about what they created and it who knows why this thing was what its purpose was but it was not it is not what it is today not even a little bit like it, it's it's on par with like the most beautiful cathedral you could imagine you know it's like well it's, it's funny like we were <laughs> as we were talking the the last live about like the post office in manila and you're like, why oh, yeah. did anyone care that much about a post office? Yeah. Like, was like they took the mail that seriously? Like, what? Like, what is the deal with that? And then, the, but you look around a lot of places that they had old post office that they, that are converted into other things now, because obviously it makes no sense that you have a post office that big to sort mail, no, <laughs> to ship things. It makes no sense. So why do they ever have these grand post offices? But but that's one of the biggest buildings they have in a lot of these places. A lot of the old world buildings were post office mm-hmm. or libraries. And then they tear the libraries down. And they never build them again. I it was, I think it was, I can't remember the, the count. I, I hate to not give them credit here, but I was watching a video uh, last week and it was showing the insane asylums and the orphanages. And they were showing them all around like the place. And you could clearly tell that these things were not built to be orphanages or insane asylums. Some of them are like on the water and they're mm-hmm. just amazing. And you're like, you built it. You put that, you built that to put people who are crazy in. It uh, it clearly looks like these places were all repurposed. I mean, mm-hmm. that you did like, you just can't like what, with our mindset, again, you're thinking about people who had to worry about bare necessities way more than we did. So why would they go through so much effort to make places like that for places you don't really want to even talk about? It makes like it, it it makes no sense. Again, people need to try to put their mind, you know, like put your rational brain, at least you think you're a rational brain, and try to put it in people's bodies in 200 years ago. And what would you be thinking about this? And if it doesn't make sense to you now, it it doesn't make sense then because it because because you imagine if they tried to build a building like that right now for crazy people what would everybody in the town say <laughs> first of all say? they wouldn't want it they wouldn't want it anywhere near them no and secondly they would be like why is the government spending all this money to build that mm-hmm. so why did they ever do that it, it doesn't wait well, you wouldn't this is it's 
to me, it's clear they were all repurposed buildings into something really odd. Like, really, and really, because there's only so much a city needs as well. <laughs> it's kind of like, and they have, they have all these excess buildings. Because this is the thing, these, especially the European cities, you know, if you, if you actually look at Paris, for example, it's enormous and it's so mm -hmm. complex and the the buildings are huge they're actually a lot bigger than you think they are when you actually go see them like the they're built with multiple floors all of them the facades on them are immaculate and it's kind of they're all unique as well at the same time like they might mm -hmm. have they have a theme but each one has character its own unique character which is just so odd because we don't do that. We don't. Who builds like that? Like you, they, you have. You well, really... they don't. Well, if you think that if you could do, like, even if you think about the old World Fair stuff, and you think that they were just made of plaster, I think what people don't understand, like that, that a lot of plaster is made out of concrete. Mm -hmm. Like that's what like stucco is made out of, like concrete things like that. It's not. It's not. It, it's not just like plaster of Paris. It's like literal, like tangible things. So you could maybe make molds, and then you pour it, and you make forms of things. But you have to make the molds, and that's not easy. Mm -hmm. So then you look around these places, and none of them are the same. Like none of them. And you look around the details, and, the, and a lot of the details are different on these buildings all around them. Mm -hmm. So they don't make anything. It's like they they have a style, but they're not uniform either. This is what I'm saying. That's impossible. Yeah, when that's, you think that's about what's that. crazy. Like, it's like yeah. yeah. So how so how did they do that? And again, but then they have repeating patterns in these places, which supposedly they did by hand. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, they're really good because they all look exactly the same <laughs> it's it, it like i said it blows me away and supposedly these were chiseled mm -hmm. out it, it, it in a way i said it, it does it it does bring me back to like the ancient aliens stuff with like i think there's some pharaohs like or sphinxes like a, like these statues and they use a computer you know to to show you that both sides of the face of this statue that's made of like granite and polished, it's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. How did they do that? Because if you were, you know, how steady was the guy's hand who's doing mm -hmm. like that? I mean, we know people, we know that people are not that perfect. So how did they do that? <laughs> I, I, that's the thing. I don't think that we, we have a answer to all these things. And I don't want to ever be the person who says, Oh, that's easy. I know exactly how they did that. Unless I know. But I mean, mm. that I think that a lot of these questions probably are going to be left up in the, hey, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And I, that might be unsatisfying for people. And I think that's maybe that's where people really are going to be resistant to the Jesus came back because you and I are probably never going to be able to give them a one for one on everything. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, Another thing as well is, you know, like I said, just looking at like a city like Paris, which is enormous, well laid out, highly detailed, intricate designs everywhere with their own unique flavor, going for miles and miles and miles and miles mm -hmm. and miles. Very old, built a long time ago when the population was supposedly very small. Okay. Right. That's a good, that's a good point. None of it adds up. None of it adds up. Like our, we, our history books are a lie. And I'm actually, I know this is really weird, but I always remember Michael Jackson. Okay, and this is going off on one, but I remember <laughs> seeing that video of him giving a speech before his "This Is It" tour. He died, didn't he? I think either during or just before that tour. And he's there, and he's giving this speech, and he's saying to a, cr a group of people, "They've lied in the history books. Our history books are a lie." You know the the. the none of it's true that's what he's saying really out loud <laughs> like uh, they've yeah. lied and it's these are his words you know and it's like on some guys like really old nokia motorola razor phone camera or something like that you know what i mean but he's there saying mm -hmm. they've lied to us in the history books what they're teaching our children is complete nonsense and like what did he know now i'm thinking about it in hindsight and why did they take him out he probably knew a lot you know, for a while and I, w I wonder how many of these people who i remember even prince like i used that i used is a clip of Prince when I was talking about George Washington not being the first president. I know people will, will argue about he was the first president under the Constitution, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't teach you that, though. They teach you that he was just the first, full stop. And then they say, oh, well, these other guys were different. But but Prince has this clip where he's saying that when I when he first found out there was eight presidents before Washington, he said he wanted to slap somebody. And I <laughs> and he would. But he's there's clips of Prince talking about a lot of these things. And of course, Prince is no longer with us. 
is that is that possible that these people and like did these people get initiated into these clubs and this is a tortured existence for these people at some point like that that maybe they have they've got all the things of the world and they realize it's chasing the wind it does not satisfy and living a lie and not being able to talk about it is probably torture for the, these people and then eventually mm-hmm. they start talking about it and eventually they're not with us anymore mm-hmm. i think that that's that's the uncomfortable truth where it's like what does it say in ecclesiastes again that solomon says that with much knowledge comes much sorrow that like the more you learn you're like oh man like yeah. that too yeah that too that's weird and you and it's i get sick to my stomach too that when you do like it's funny sometimes and sometimes like i said i just can't take it anymore like i'm tired of of all this nonsense mm-hmm. i want to know more but then the more i learn i'm like oh gosh yeah that's <laughs> mm-hmm. it is it is like the the movie the matrix where what is it cypher wants to go back into the matrix he mm-hmm. wants to he wants to go blue pill himself and get back in there and mm-hmm. pretend the stakes real i mean i don't think we want to do that but it is you know it's, it's it is tough to, to to learn some of this stuff and it's obviously it's way worse for these people who are in these secret societies who've made oaths and whatever mm-hmm. and yeah they can't really ever say anything because I, I remember like as as well like i'm just remembering celebrities who just died mysteriously and they all said something prior to dying um <laughs> yeah. and, and rick mail is one of them um uh, who did he play in america how would you know in, in america what role did he play he was that imaginary friend in a film wasn't he was it right right uh, dro- something fred something dropped oh in. yeah i think i know <laughs> i think we're talking about he looked like a crazy person in yeah, movie, yeah 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 uh, okay. oh, was it was it Ro- drop dead fred or something like yeah, that yeah something remember. like that I, I, I remember i can picture the like the movie cover yeah yeah so so to americans rick mail is probably just that's probably how you know him more than but for me in britain he's he's a really he was a huge comedian right and he was very funny um a very a very visceral actor you know body mm-hmm. like a like a mime you know he had, it's just everything he did was just funny just couldn't you could not not laugh at the guy he just oozed humor in everything he did and he worked with another guy called adrian edmondson and they were like a dynamic duo and they had a series called the young ones at bottom and these type of things and it was i grew up on that with my family you know my my dad used to watch these things it's like uh early 90s humor to that type of humor coming out of the 80s Mm -hmm. and so he was like rick mail i've seen him live i went to go see his shows when i was a teenager perform with adrian edmondson doing it like so i I, know i was i felt like this was when he died i actually felt that one i was like oh (laughs) and i've never i never Mm -hmm. really cared you know about celebrities dying because i don't know them but he was one right. of those people. It's kind of like, in a way, I, I felt like, you know, I kind of knew the guy ish, but I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't know him. So I felt that one, but then I didn't realize this until years after his death that he's been filmed talking to the camera. Uh, just, he was having a cigarette or something like that. And they approached him and he just randomly started going on about it, saying, you only believe where the, what the camera points at. You need to understand that it's all controlled. The narrative is controlled by the people who, who point the camera. You need to ask, why are they pointing the camera at that thing? <laughs> like, oh, and he wow. just and he just <laughs> smokes his cigarette and walks off. <laughs> okay. That's cryptic. Like, like, very cryptic. <laughs> very odd. And he dies not long after this. You know, and it's kind of like, it, it, did he get sick of it? Was he like, I'm sick of this. I'm just sick of it. Like, And it's like, listen, you need... To, listen to me listen to me he's looking at the camera you need to listen to me (laughs) Mm -hmm. wake up like basically i think he was having one of those moments and it's kind of like right just 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 get rid of rick before he says something stupid just i think that's probably how these people act and think you know and yeah i don't know we we don't even yeah i guess it is i mean it's 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 certain people can be bought and i guess before you realize that things are unsatisfying that it's way easier to buy you yeah you know but again as somebody i feel like that in a small version that I grew up in a, a certain kind of mindset thinking if I had these things, like the appearance of what I thought I wanted, I'd be satisfied with that. But then you get into it and you're like, this is, it's kind of uncomfortable. I kind of feel anxious about even owning these things now. Cause one day they might be taken away, but knowing that they don't really satisfy you like you think they would, but you could imagine like that these people who are like rock stars for like, I don't know how long, I mean, I, that's got to be like, the Rolling Stones are still touring. I mean, these these people are so old. Like, what could they possibly still be 
just doing the same thing. I think for a lot of people, it just, it, at some point you, you want to move on and grow. And, and I don't know, I mean, again, how many, if you're living the hedonistic lifestyle, like how, how much is enough? Mm-hmm. I think some of us have decided it's, it's not worth it. And I think probably is, it's, it's probably a situation where they can't sleep at night, you know, what, especially knowing that if they are part of this demonic system, that's literally leading, you know, the people off the cliff, maybe that's what he, that's like, it's the moments of conscious of like, stop believing this, even believe in me mm-hmm. because it's, it's a lot, cause it is a lie. It's like, I signed a contract. I have to do this. I can't get out. I hate my life. I'm, yeah, st- I'm yeah. stuck here people stop it don't idolize me i'm trapped i'm in prison it's kind of they have those moments don't they i think where he's mm-hmm. like i'm obligated to do this or they'll kill me i need to spread the message they they own me to say or else i'm in trouble and they'll kill my family too it's that kind of thing yeah <laughs> they have those moments where it's like it's bittersweet i have all the fame and money in the world but i'm i'm a prisoner i'm trapped and yeah you know, there was a there was <laughs> a i know i watched this uh i think it was the good fight ministries did that they sold their souls to rock and roll and i remember it was like there was a clip about Elvis and he went to go to talk to some preacher and he was saying, I think it was like, this was like young Elvis, like good looking Elvis who was like at the top of his game. And he said, he tells the preacher, you ain't never seen anybody as miserable as me. And you, and you really start to like unpack that. Like he would have everything as mm-hmm. far as the world would be concerned. So why is he so miserable? You know, again, chasing the wind, maybe it is like he got in the club and he realized that it's not what I thought it was. Mm-hmm. And then then you're kind of like, that's the thing where like, I know, especially in America, where you have these geriatric politicians, you think, why would they continue to hang on? It is like they they literally have sold their souls and they cannot get out. Because otherwise, why wouldn't you want to just say, hey, enough of this stuff? Like, why would I want to be fighting on CNN and you know, go in these public squabbles with these other geriatric politicians. <laughs> Do you, is it really worth it? Like, why wouldn't they, these people have enough money to go sit on some beach some someplace? Yeah. Hang out with their grandkids or something. Yeah. But no, they cannot get out. And I think that that, that does, to me, make me believe all the things, all the more that no, they've, they've made deals and they're, and they're, fil- and they're, and they're still fulfilling their, it was like Bob Dylan said the same thing. Like, why are you still doing this? And he's like, cause I made a deal. I'm up, mm-hmm. up, upholding my end of the bargain. He's talked, and he was literally, he almost could have straight up said, I made a deal with the devil because it's, because <laughs> he didn't, he wasn't shy about it. And that usually means they did something horrible, which they can be blackmailed with very easily. So the stuff at the very, at the very least, at the very yeah. least, it's like, that's a way of selling. And again, people do, you know, is there a contract with blood? Maybe, mm-hmm. but I do think that that's the more likely way people sell their souls is if you do this, if you compromise yourself in this way, there's no going back. Mm-hmm. At least that's what they would believe. And then therefore it would be true. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like you can have anything you want, but you have to do this horrible thing and we have to record it and film it. And it's kind mm-hmm. of like, there's no going back then. Like you, you know, we'll just, we'll reveal you for the evil person you actually are. If you go against us, it's that type of thing. And it's, it's like, all... what's it's like, what's the one thing you won't do? Yeah. And he's like, well, that's what you're going to have to do. <laughs> basically like that, that's what it does i think that's what it comes down to and some people will make that choice will and that's and again the people who do make those choices they prey on the ignorant they play on the weak don't they they prey on those mm. who want the fame and adoration the narcissists you know they, they prey on the people who are so lost in the world that they don't understand yet that it's all it's sand through the fingers it's nothing it's yeah. it's, it's, it's 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 what's the what, what's the word ecclesiastes i'm losing it uh, vanity it's all vanity it's all vanity what profit a man you know gains the whole world but loses his soul but uh anyway anyway we've been going for two hours i know you have to get going i don't want to hold you for too much longer so we'll, we'll wrap it up here uh but this has been great yeah great. this is an awesome conversation yeah do you have any uh closing thoughts for this therapy session any any last any parting advice you want to give to people out there you know and then we'll leave it at that I would just encourage any people that obviously as we started with like a little bit of my testimony of like, if you, if you like, what like Paul and I do, I would say that you can do it. I would say that if I can do it, I believe anybody can do it. So mm-hmm. like it, it really is. And it, and you can start small and at the same time, like you can play a part in this and however you want to, 
And I think that's like, it's, you know, like God leads you in that kind of way where that you feel vote, you feel the need to say something. And the, I think the coolest thing about this, as we were saying that, that locally, you might not have a lot of people who can talk about this, but I guess you, if you get a voice on social media, you'll, you'll find your people, you know, you'll find your, your community and your church. And I think that if that's all you're doing it for, you know, maybe you'll be way bigger than us. Maybe you won't be, but it really doesn't matter. Cause I think the end we're like, if you're just planting seeds, it's, it's about like the message. And if you believe in it, I think that you can do it. And I, but I would just say that, yeah, to me that I would just encourage people to, yeah, continue to question what you've been told, you know, rely on what God has told us and just um, kind of let the chips fall where they may. And it might get uncomfortable sometimes, but that's okay. Because I think that you don't grow through comfortable things. You grow through uncomfortable things. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. embrace it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, that's a great message. If you guys, if we're just people. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can do what we're doing. And it, it's that thing, isn't it? You know, it might not be brilliant at first, but just keep doing something bad <laughs> and it will get better as time goes on. You know, this, but I remember, I, I, like I said, I remember when I first started, it was terrible. It was not mm-hmm. great. Okay. <laughs> but build it in there will come all the, all the cliches say, you know, it's actually true, believe it or not, you know, and, and I, I agree, you know, get on board, start your own, start your own fellowship, get, just start doing this. Cause I think, and it's the thing, I think we're living in a time now where, we're not that we're not actually considered that crazy anymore. I think conspiracy theorists are actually start getting some clout now. I think people are taking them a little bit more. Like I, I think, yeah, I think, I think they're the onto something. Like you, you get out there now, and it's like that that you do. Like again, it's funny how like we were just saying like that when you go like look through the the short season idea, it's like you were saying we need to like actually go revisit everything. And I'm sure a lot of people who are waking up to different things. Hmm. I do kind of remember Paul in like JT or somebody saying something about that. Maybe I should go listen to what they meant. Mm -hmm. And then people are more likely to believe it. And I I do think that obviously I think it would be better. There's more of us just because I do think that I think connecting with guys like you and obviously alpha talks and you know, some other friends, it like, it is iron sharpening iron because I think that this is such a big topic and there's, there's so many things that we can, branches of this we could not go in it all alone no. we need y'all, <laughs> we need y'all. That, yeah. especially with this little season thing like this is a mm-hmm. team effort i mean i wouldn't know half the stuff if it wasn't for the people in the comment section sharing yeah, with me all their opinions awesome. you know mm-hmm. um and again i'm, I'm not i'm not a, an expert at anything i would say you know? yeah. and, and and i have those moments you were trying to mention early it's like why am i the one that's that's leading the, how did i get into this situation <laughs> you know what's what's happened here like i i am not an authority like i actually, actually what is going on but um again i think uh, let the chips land where they where they may as you said earlier um thank thanks for this i really appreciate you coming on and oh always it. man like i said we'll do it again we definitely we definitely will um, so I'll, I'll let you get going <laughs> but again, stay in touch. You've got me on Instagram. We're in touch anyway. We're always sending yeah. each other stuff. So that's great. Uh, I really, I really appreciate this. Thank you very much. All right, man. God bless you, brother. God bless you guys in the chats. See you in the next one. Bye now. I want you to get together.